What is happening, people? So, welcome back. Today seems like a good time to talk about some tiling. So, um, what we just did here is a herringbone uh, little bar that we made in our living room. Um, so, stick with me. We'll go through. This is going to be kind of a quick, quick hitter. I'm not going to go over really much tiling. I'm assuming that if you're doing herringbone, then you've already tiled before. You know how to apply thin set. You know how to grout. You know how to do all that stuff. Um, this is just kind of go over the where to start, how to start, your best friend as a speed square, how to do the corners to make them match up. So it's going to be a few little intricate things like that because um, I'm assuming that you already know how to tile if you're attacking this. If you haven't tiled before, I would tile before you know, normal before you try to tackle a herring, but it can be a frustrating pattern, take some patience and uh, some precision. So, uh, you know, for uh, example, my spacers kept falling out of the wall, so I started getting irritated and taking the spacers and just sh throwing them at the wall. My wife had to come and tape them in there and calm me down. Um, I have a plumb wall and I have a not plumb wall. So you can actually get the best of both worlds here to see if it's possible to make a pl non plumb wall look good with herringbone. Let's go. So when doing a herringbone, the best really way to go about this is to get a template going here. And really, what I'm doing here is, since I have such a tall area, um, just like you would if you're doing a shower, I'm just working from the ground up here. Um, so, um, let's see, so the first thing I did was measure where the middle was. I figured it would be right around here. Then I kind of did a template dry run it all the way over each side. You see my marks right there is where my edges are. Should be around where they are. That's a good looking big piece as we got over there. So that's cool. Um, so then what I did was I started, you can see I have this line going down here. That's where my bottom's gonna be. So I started just fitting in pieces. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna just get to cut all these so I can just start at the bottom and then move up. Um, and then just have to worry about the sides. So you can still have gone this far. So I mean, it's very simple. Use spacer so we can get it right where we want it. We'll put one right there, spacer. And I'll get out my 45 degree, put it up there, draw a line, get out another piece, put the spacers in there, put the 45 on it, draw a line. So. We'll finish that up and then I'm going to take them out and I'm going to cut them. And also, which, also what you can tell is that whenever I first started on the very first piece, <clears throat> I just used my tile. So I, to make sure it was at a 45, I just you know, I basically put this up to where I had it on a straight line and I butted the tile up to it to make sure it was on a 45. All right, so before we start laying, um, if you have a corner, then you need to kind of Put a spacer in the wall because you do not want these overlapping on each other because then your um, lines from one wall to the other will not match up so i use just this foam windowsill you got to find something the thickness of your tile so my tile i think is a quarter inch thick so i cut this foam windowsill in half and put it up in the corner of the wall because if not then they're going to overlap and your lines aren't going to look good they aren't going to match up so as you see, I have down here where I cut this in half and then I'll peel it apart and then this will go to the wall. Now, for, to start laying the tile, so I marked the dead center where I planned on beginning. And um, as you can see, I have a line down the middle. Well, that's the corners with my um, windowsill that I put up there. Just something that you can put in the, in the edge there. It doesn't matter what it is. Just as long as it's the thickness of your tile so they do not overlap each other. So I have marked on my wall where the center is. I've marked on this tile where I want to start at and where I want the center to be. So, um. so when starting to lay these, um, I would always recommend with whatever piece you start with. So say I start with that piece. Just when you start it, just put your 45 down and let, let the piece rest against that. All right, so that's a good way to start whenever you go to another, you know, another edge, you know, whatever, whenever you're starting the sidewall, 
the bottom piece, you can just rest it right there and then you can tile on top of it until it dries up. So here we go, we're off and going. You can tell I went from center out. I've hit this left corner here and my bit of advice is don't sit here and try to conserve pieces. Cut whole pieces for this edge because then you can take a whole piece, cut it for that back wall there, and then you could flop, flop it, flip it over to this left wall, to the adjacent wall, and use the rest of that tile piece for that wall. Um, they should all be about the same cuts. I mean, there really shouldn't be much difference. Maybe just a quarter inch here and there, just depending on how um, accurate you are. So I measure in from the inside, for this inside corner piece right here. You can tell it's five and a quarter-ish right there. And then um, I take that, measure out five and a quarter of the inside piece. Then I take my speed square, slap it on there, and uh, measure it just like that. They're all the same cuts like that. They're all 45s like this. Speed square is your best friend. Very simple. Um, so I will use that piece for that wall. This other piece I will use for the adjacent wall when I get to there. So you can tell I put up this piece. Now I have this other piece. You see why I have that. If I did not have these overlapping, if I didn't have that um, spacer in back there, they would not line up like this. So that's how we can just keep it flowing like that. Okay, so we're all done with the back wall here. And, and what I decided to do is I start this left side of this wall here is I took my leftover pieces. They're about six and a half inches long. And I kind of put them up against the wall here and I marked a line, got out my level and marked it all the way up. That way I can just kind of assure myself, give myself peace of mind that I'm going on the, on the right path here and that everything's going to be same level 45 degree angles, et cetera, et cetera. All right, so you can see we got them started. And then after that, everything is just what you already did back here. So this board right here is this one or this one. So I know that my next one is gonna be this piece, which is just a full piece for me cut an angle. So it's just carrying those on. This one, which is basically that, that last piece, full piece with an angle, is the same as this one, or as the same as this one. So I know that the next one's gonna be a full piece sitting on top of it. So just carry it out. It should be the same cuts as what you started your bottom with. So here you can see, if you're looking at the side, it just looks like it's flowing up. So that was a um, plumb side. We get to these areas. These will wanna slide down if you don't have it close enough over here. So I just use some tape and tape it to this one to help it. So this will be on my non-plumb non wall. Should be the same thing, just might have a little bit bigger of a grout line here. So the finished product on our unplumb wall, as you can tell here, so you, we can see some spots where we have some bigger grout lines, right? You get up here, you can actually get some really good ones because up there is where it trailed off. Beautiful here, trailed off. Couple things that I could say, I, it is possible to make this look good. And it's, this doesn't look bad, but it doesn't look perfect by any means. And you got some bigger grout lines. So first off, this is not completely center. I didn't do a good enough job. This is about a five and a half inch cut. This is almost a full piece. Once we got up here, we got up here and we were talking, you know, uh, bigger than a full piece. We we're talking a little bit past it. If this would have been that size, then this would have been a whole lot easier to match up these sides here. Since I had basically trailed off up here to where this isn't even a full width of a piece, that's why it really, these grout lines started getting bigger. Down here where it wasn't, it's not as bad. So that's first, is to make sure that you are not using a whole piece on the edge, A. B is, for my example, this trailed that way the further I went up. I did not do a good enough job um, because of the these were full pieces, basically, of really matching, really going with that. These are all basically the same size. These should be a half inch longer, probably. 
I did not cut, I did not match up my spacer. I did not butt to my spacer good enough. So those are the two tips where you could help with an unplumbed wall. Um, you know, like I said, this is slightly unplumbed. It still looks fine. You know, you're not gonna notice it, but it does not look as good as this plumb wall, right? All right, so this is just some quick hitters of me just uh, throwing up a tile. Like I said earlier, I'm not gonna spend much time showing how to tile or anything like this, but you can see that once you start going, it's all just repetitive. It's one goes on top of the other at an angle, then one comes over the edge of that one, and yada, yada. It's just uh, like any other tile, and it's just at an angle, but it all ends up being kind of the same repetitive uh, process that you go through. So what you can see is that definitely on this non-plumb wall, I kind of ripped off some cardboard and I folded it up to kind of make sure that all my lines whenever they're turning were matching. Now that did give me bigger grout lines. It's not perfect. I used different sizes of cardboard from the box, the tile box that it came in, but it helped me kind of match everything up the best I could. All right, and then final step with any tile job is to grouting. So this is just a quick little hit of me slapping the grout in the lines and uh, washing it off. Since it's black on white, there's no easy way to do it, to be honest with you. So I just kind of scrubbed, you know, kind of really scrubbed it in, um, kind of got a, any dry spots loosened up. Then I went to my normal swipe that I do here um, to kind of really clean it up. And then the trick that I found is that wet half of a towel and after it dries for about 30 minutes, go ahead and just give it a little rub down with that wet part of the towel and then hit it with the dry part to, and that really will help it look like, you can tell the difference here. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully that helps out with a couple little, um, you know, starting points, sidewalls, whatever, um, grouting tips. So hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, like, subscribe. God bless you. God loves you. I love you. We'll see you next time.